Well, guys and girls, it is official. We got a new to us dump truck in the fleet. Let's uh, let's check her out. Real quick, exciting announcement before we get into today's video, guys. The Utility Expo is coming up fast. I've been going to this thing since 2019. Not going to miss it in 2023. And I have partnered with them to give away two free show tickets and two free travel packages. All you guys got to do is check out the link down in the description. Get registered before May 31st. You got to hit, hit the link. Get registered before May 31st. The registration ends for the contest at May 31st. So go down below. Get on that link. Get registered. Hopefully you guys will win so we can see you there at the show. All right, so you guys have been following the channel for a while. No, I've been looking for a used triaxle dump truck, and I was really looking for a Mac O2 and older CV, CX, or RD all would have worked. CH would have been my first choice. CX would have been my second choice. RD would have been my third. A lot of you guys commented, why are you looking for a Mac? Some people love them. Some people hate them. Guys, here's why I am looking for a Mac and why I'm looking for a Mac in this time range. This truck right here is the truck I learned everything there is about whenever I worked at the dealership. I went to all the Mac schools, the Mac University, all the Mac training. I've got all the books. I got a tremendous amount of knowledge about how to uh, maintain, diagnose, and fix this particular bulldog right here. I am not claiming by any stretch of the imagination this is the best truck out there. Um, like any other product, there's a lot of things it does really good. There's a lot of things it could do better, but this is what I know. It's what I know how to maintain. It's what I take care of. Parts are readily available for it, and they're uh, somewhat inexpensive this also being an o2 model is a 100 pre-emissions no egr no nothing uh just uh just a good old-fashioned diesel engine which is 100 legal to run here in the state of indiana so that's kind of why i zoned in on this particular model of truck and why i was pretty uh dead set this actually has the exact same engine in it as that truck over there um which like i said it's just i'm, I'm extremely familiar with this truck i'm more familiar with this truck than i am any other truck on the road so it just makes sense for me to come home with this thing to where you guys know we do all of our maintenance ourselves uh it just makes my life a whole lot easier so let's talk about timelines real quick i'm sure i'm gonna get a bunch of comments about timelines i'm actually filming this video on march 1st we just got home from all the auctions in florida you guys have maybe already seen this on clint from cnc's channel uh where he actually purchased this thing for me down in Florida. I actually posted some videos from the auctions already of uh, being down in Florida looking at trucks. Somebody <laughs> somebody commented on Chris Let's Dig 18's channel and called my channel the History Channel because I'm always the last one to post, which is actually kind of funny and I can't argue with. I've got several times kind of why my videos lag behind guys. It's because uh, I'm busy and I do what I can to get what I can out when I can. So anyways, this thing just showed up yesterday. Uh, from Florida, this particular truck here, out of all the trucks I looked at in Florida, this truck wasn't down here whenever I was down there. It actually showed up the day after I left. I was pretty disappointed whenever I left Florida. I went down there with 100% intentions to buy a truck and uh, left empty-handed. I actually even went and looked at two trucks on Facebook Marketside in Orlando. It still came up with nothing, but at, uh, the next morning, phone rang, Clint called and said, hey, this truck rolled into the lot down here, and uh, I think it might be just what you're looking for. Sent me some pictures of it, checked it out for me. It was nice enough to kind of stick around and uh, get it bought. I could have bought it online, uh, but with him staying there, it changes some of the auction fees and stuff. So I greatly appreciate Clint from CNC Equipment uh, sticking around doing that for me. He also arranged all the shipping to get here. So if you haven't checked out Clint's videos, excuse me, I'll link them down below and uh, check them out but enough about the situation let's talk about the truck so first time laying eyes on it here guys and the truck itself is in uh man it is in really good shape for being an o2 a lot of these trucks i looked at they have been well used i mean an o2 truck is 21 or 22 years old or 20 or 21 years old are 22 years old at this point i guess somewhere in that time frame they've got a lot of miles on them they're tired they've been used this truck here even under the hood there is the e-tech motor we're looking at 
got a few power steering hoses that are weeping a little bit maybe got a small leak on the turbo up there but all in all it is extremely clean and one of the cleanest ones i've seen i cannot argue that fact whatsoever you guys also notice here it does have the engine brake housing on it which for some reason is not working i haven't drove the truck yet but clint claims claims it's not working so we'll have to look at that the cab has been completely repainted it does have quite a few runs on it i did notice i had to bed up yesterday there was a bunch of runs back behind the uh, cab also noticed that they pulled the exhaust uh mounting stacks off and all that stuff has a bunch of rust on it so at one point this truck was probably pretty crusty but they did a they did a decent presentable job of getting it painted up and i don't see a whole lot of signs of any cancer or anything that was patched so you can see a lot of the rust on the lights and stuff they put them back and the underneath the cab it's not bad it looks pretty good it's like i said gotta keep in mind what you're looking at it's it's not a new truck so all in all pretty happy with it all the brakes on the truck look pretty good I'll walk around over here to the other side this is actually the old r model frames this is the new version of the r model is the best way to describe it which is why it's still got the goofy uh, steering box and they also don't quite turn as tight as what they should but i mean everything looks pretty pretty tight pretty legit this is a slightly newer motor than what's in the other truck it has the computer relocated different oil cooler on it all that's in preparation for what's coming as far as the egr and egr cooler and uh all that stuff but all in all got the updated coolant tank on it just like we put on the mac get inside here it is not horrible you can definitely tell it's been a florida truck the passenger seat over there is well baked pretty sure whoever drove this thing was a smoker definitely uh definitely hear him it does have the mac transmission in it i did notice unloading it off the trailer the shift tower and this thing is pretty much uh junk we're going to pull that out and get it rebuilt it's just got so much slop you can definitely drive it the way it is but it's kind of hard to kind of hard to find gears one negative about this truck is it does have the maxi torque transmission this is honestly this is honestly a really good transmission but it's very expensive to work on and very difficult to work on and they're obsolete they don't make them anymore so we'll uh we'll run her for as long as we want to run her and then we may may figure out something else but i think it seems to shift good all the gears seem to be there we may just have to rebuild the old shift tire there and tighten her up make her a little bit easier to drive air conditioner works cruise control works everything else does seem to work we do have to add uh air supply for a trailer at some point we'll get to that in a, in a later video the engine brake must have worked at some point because somebody has flat wore out the switch let me tell you i don't know maybe the switch has just went bad but it's in uh pretty bad shape but all in all for the year the age on the cab don't look like anything has been leaking i'm uh i'm pretty pleased with it i'm pretty convinced that they've got the wrong steering wheel on this i don't believe this is the steering wheel that belongs on this truck but that's neither here nor there we got a steering wheel so we'll just be happy we got a steering wheel uh going on back to the truck and clint clint kind of uh gave me a heads up on this this bed has definitely got a lipstick job on it uh they welded all these panels in there because the panel behind it is pretty much uh destroyed if you guys look underneath the bottom of the bed it's all beat down it has like i said it's got the new panels on it to make it look a little better get a little bit more life out of it if you guys look uh down here you can see the whole bottom of the tailgate's all busted out but it'll definitely get us by uh for a while and the truck itself i believe is in good enough shape if we ever want to put a bed on it it's definitely worth it one thing that is a major positive about this i just realized they painted right over top of the light right there one thing that is a major positive about it it does have a two-way tailgate on it so this this tailgate will open out this way or it'll swing all the way around in what they call a barn door configuration so if we ever use this thing to haul brush and so forth that'll definitely come in handy i guess the equipment operators were possibly some rookies they got a c channel up there but again if you guys look right here this bed is in pretty bad shape got a bunch of holes knocked into it it uh it's it's seen better days but it's in good enough shape we can run good enough shape we can get it by i didn't buy this truck for the bed i bought this truck because of the truck 
Um, and the big thing about uh, almost all trucks this age, the bed is pretty much toast on them. But this truck is definitely, from what I've seen so far, in good enough shape to uh, put a new bed on. So we may run it here for a year or two and stick a new, uh, stick a new bed on her and uh, be good to go. So uh, Clint also pointed us out too, this lift axle has been welded up a little bit right here. The other side needs the same. That's not, that's pretty common. Not necessarily a huge deal. Tires on it, um, they're probably 30 to 40% average. It'll run for a little while, but it's gonna need some tires at um, at some point. But the most impressive part, oh yeah, we're missing a, missing a window here. We gotta find that stuff. The most impressive part about this truck is the frame. Let's fire this thing up and uh, check, out, uh, check out the frame. It is uh, remarkably clean. Four hundred forty-seven thousand miles, which is actually pretty low miles for uh, this other truck. No warning lights whatsoever, which is definitely a plus. This thing's even got really good oil pressure at uh, idle. As Clint pointed out, it does have a little bit of blow by in the engine, but no more miles I'm going to put on this truck. It's not a huge concern. I'm not trying to rebuild an engine and rebuild the frame. So, uh, pretty handy little controls here. We'll uh, click the PTO in, let out on the clutch, and uh, up that goes. Hoists don't seem to be leaking, which is a good plus. Got a little water in the bed back there. I did notice the one time I raised this yesterday that the uh, kickout cable needs to be adjusted. It'll bottom itself out, which it shouldn't do. But look how fast this thing comes down. Most of them don't come down this fast. That. Uh, it's definitely nice when you get in the uh, old crap situation. Been there a few times. This right here is your uh, lift axle. So you push that down. You see, guys, see the axle drop. Pull that up. Raises it back up. And these buttons here are your uh, tailgate. And that is your tarp. Everything does seem to work. Here's what makes this truck worth a whole lot of money is right here, the frame. This is why this truck should come from the factory with those frame rails compressed together like that. What happens over time is stuff gets down in there and they call it rust jacking or frame jacking. And this thing will be split apart three quarters of a half inch, three quarters of an inch to sometimes even an inch. And the bigger it gets, the more stuff gets down in there. And eventually it breaks your frame in two. It is hard to find a truck. This clean a frame, and this is, this is a factory clean frame. The other thing you really gotta watch is this trunnion back here gets a bunch of stuff on it, and this one has a little bit, but you can also tell it hasn't set in there for a while. Uh, nothing's really cracked or busted up. They'll also bust up down there around that, and uh, may, we may inspect that when we get in the shop, but from what I see, it looks pretty good. I also believe this has at least got 46,000 pound rears in it because that's when they go to the bronze trunnion bushing. Uh, the Mac, which has 44,000 pound rears. If you look right here, it has the uh, neoprene bushing in it. See how that cap's different right there? So this is definitely a lot better of a, a lot better of a setup. But brakes on the truck all the way around almost look brand new. Don't see any rear ends leaking. Uh, all the universals look good. I believe somebody's put a fairly new carrier bearing in it at some point. I was looking at the transmission yesterday. It's had some work done to it at some point, but uh, as long as it works, we're gonna keep on uh, keep on running it for sure. But man, it is just a unbelievably clean frame truck. It's. It's incredible. This is the cable I was talking about that's out of adjustment. When the bed gets up high enough, this uh, cable is supposed to pull the PTO out and uh, keep the cylinder hoist from uh, jamming itself up. It can kind of blow a cylinder apart that way if you're not careful. So we'll have to uh, do that. It has been refloored. It don't look bad. Like I said, this guy, this bed guys, we're gonna run this for a year or two and uh, see what happens. But it'll get it'll definitely get us by for a while. All right, I'm sure there's already a hundred comments in the comment section, so let's go ahead and talk about the uh, big green elephant in the barn. Now, Lieutenant Dan's never gonna get done. Why don't you just finish Lieutenant Dan instead of buying a new truck? 
all valid questions to be honest with you. All right, so here, here's what's hard to explain to people that may or may not know. That is a triaxle dump truck. That's going to be a triaxle dump truck. That's pretty much where the similarities end of the two. This truck over here was bought to run up and down the road pretty much on a daily basis if needs to. And I can put a driver in this truck. He can go out and do stuff. And it'll, it's a much more comfortable, economical, affordable truck to run on a regular basis. This truck was never built to do that. This truck was built to be a fill-in truck. Go get a load of rock if you need it. Move a piece of equipment if you need it. I hate to say it's a novelty build, but that's basically what it is. My needs have changed, and I need a much more driver, user-friendly, economical way to get up and down the road to get materials and equipment to these job sites. The C8500 wasn't filling that build. This truck here will never be able to fit that build. That's where this truck here comes into play. This, I gotta, I gotta get you guys to understand, this is a hobby build. I do this, I'm building this truck because I enjoy doing it. There is nothing here that makes money or makes sense, to be honest with you. This is kind of a losing operation, but it's something I do in my fill-in times. We've just had other projects that made more sense to complete, like the tile plow, uh, Bubba Dump, and so on and so forth. So this truck, we just finished up with Bubba Dump. We finished up with some other projects. We're gonna get this one up to the shop and service it, and then we are gonna be back on that. I promise we will get that truck done, but it'll be completed when it makes sense to do so. Hopefully, hopefully that answers all the Lieutenant Dan questions. I know a lot of you guys are anxious for me to get back on that project. I'm anxious to get back on that project as well. It just quite hasn't made sense to do so, but I think, I think, I don't wanna promise it, but I think the time is near. So this is what we're gonna do with the, uh, the new Mac. We need to come up with a catchy name. Somebody still need to call it Little Dan instead of Lieutenant Dan, which uh, may work, but we're gonna take this thing up to the shop. It did come from auction. We know very little about it, so before we put it on the road, at least like to get it in the shop, change all the fluids in it, or change the major fluids, check all the fluids, kind of roll around underneath it, check it out, see what we got, uh, see if we can get some of the odds and ends stuff fixed, and then we'll uh, we'll put it to work and see what she's really made of. So let's head to the shop. So one thing that's kind of cool or a little bit different about these Mac transmissions, there's a few other ones out there like that, but Mac is kind of known for it. If you flip that down, it puts you in reverse. And what that allows you to do is you now have literally five gears in reverse. So if you want to giddy up and go somewhere, you can, uh, you can giddy up and go somewhere. That's for sure. The steering wheel of this thing turns so easy. Looking in my mirror right here, them rear tandems, they're not hardly walking at all, which is a good good sign. Everything's pretty nice and tight back there. I have to adjust the mirror here at some point. Flip that back to forward. Yeah, we're gonna do some of that shift tire, but that ain't a big deal.
made it to the shop successfully. All the gauges look normal. Nothing goofy. Truck seems to run. Run pretty good, drives good, shifts good. The good news is the uh, engine brake started working. I may have had to bend up the temperature. Sometimes these trucks had to see a certain oil temperature to uh, give them to work, so we fixed that problem. Then noticed a few things. The engine fan is on all the time. We may look into that a little bit, and uh, I think Clint may have mentioned it in his video, but this definitely seems a little bit doggy on the lower RPM range. This may have a boost leak or something. We'll investigate, but all in all, air conditioner works. Nothing crazy. I like it. Let's pull our, uh, let's pull our into shop and go through it. There she is guys, she has made it in the shop successfully. I actually ran to town, got some filter and some parts. So let's get the oil changed in this thing and uh, give her a little closer inspection. Couple things I noticed, just a quick glance underneath here. I don't see any major oil leaks. What you see right here is actually a little bit of power steering fluid out of a hose weeping up there, but don't know if the engine transmission or any of the rear ends or got anything major going on. I'll show you here in a minute. Looks like it's got a fairly new air compressor on it. And I think it's got a fairly new clutch in it. So that is uh, two positives, I guess. Hopefully it's got black oil in it, not some crazy killer. Come on, come out of there. It's a long-winded plug. Looks good. Air compressor's right there. I can see it's not factored. It's been changed at some point. If you guys look up in this hole right here, which is gonna be kind of hard to tell, that is not a factory clutch either, and it looks fairly, fairly recent, so. We'll take that for a win as well. All right, let that oil drain out. Let's go up and pull some filters off. And then we'll uh, start checking everything else out. All right, got the oil drain. Filter setup on this truck is uh, fairly simple. I actually got three oil filters. There's two big canister filters right here. And then there's one big centrifuge filter right here. Do not actually have this and I had to order it, but it should be in uh, tomorrow. So we're gonna go ahead and change everything we got. And then these here are primary and secondary fuel filter. Got fuel filters filled up with fuel, ready to go over there. Oil filters filled up with oil and uh, ready to go over here. Let's swap them. All right, got all the filters changed, got her topped off with oil. She's right on the right on the full mark, holds basically nine gallons. Come on, dipstick, go back down in there. Oh, you are down. Got a little primer pump here, gonna hit it a handful of times. Push any air we got in the system through from changing those filters. Definitely got a little bit in there, I can feel it. All right, let's fire up, check for leaks. I'm gonna 
good stuff. But... Sounds good. All right, back underneath. Check some transmission oil here. I can feel like we got plenty in there. Oh yeah. Looks pretty good. That's actually the check to see if it's full, but there's a little, little thing right in there and I thought I could feel it, but I wasn't for sure. So I just wanted to make dang sure and she's right there at full we may uh we may change this oil here next time we service it i'm gonna run it with that oil that's in there for now looks pretty clean coming out of there and it's full that's the main thing I many mac transmissions are just big old big old transmissions that's all all aluminum case on that one all right let's roll on back and check the uh check the check the rear ends this thing kind of sits low to the ground Hopefully we make it. All right, Row Shaggy. That is our first major find that's not good. That cross member is broke completely in two right there, which is probably why those brackets on those lift axles up there are also breaking too. That's been broke for a while. That's not a fresh break, but that's not the end of the world. We'll get old man behind the scenes on that whenever he gets back. That'd be a pretty quick and easy uh, easy fix to weld up. So as I roll back the truck, just kind of checking it out, seeing if there's anything else that stands out. Everything else looks pretty, pretty doggone good so far. It does have a brand new carrier bearing in it, which I thought it did. That's confirmation of that right there. So that's good. On back we go. This has got the air locker interaxle diff, unlike the other truck, it's got the automatic peanut style mask. Oh, we're gonna make it. That's the plug we're looking for right there. Got a small oil leak right there. That's not nothing to be too concerned about. Hopefully you guys can see right there, pull that plug out. Oil is just right there at the plug, which is perfect. Also noticed, let me get this light just right. Come here. Can you guys see all that grease that's slung up around there? I come out of this slip yoke right here, which is actually very difficult to grease. Which tells me somebody's taking the time to uh, pull some maintenance on this truck from time to time. That relay valve right there where it's real black on the bottom, that's a pretty good indication it had a bad air compressor on at one time, which kind of confirms it's a new air compressor on there. So that problem's been addressed. Addressed, And then uh, looking at these trunnions, a lot of times they'll crack out right here. That all looks really good. Sometimes they'll crack up in here. That all looks pretty good. It's got newer brakes on it. Still got paint on the springs, so that's good. Don't see any busted springs. All right, on to the next one. What's behind plug number three? Oh yeah. Not quite as clean as the middle one, but it's definitely not too shabby at all. At least they all got oil, no sawdust or something crazy like metal shavings. I did notice we got one dog bone right here. But the bushing is getting pretty close to being beat out of it. That actually keeps this rear end aligned left to right. It'll run for a while. 
but uh, it does look like they got a brand new cylinder on the tailgate up there so well, that's uh that's good news all the rubber bushings in there look pretty good brakes look good like it like it a lot all right guys got the front tire jacked up off the ground just kind of checking for play in all the steering and in the uh kingpin up there everything looks really tight it's also the proper way to uh grease that kingpins get all the weight off of it so we're gonna go through and get this booger all greased up, which is uh, one of my least favorite jobs, if you guys are wondering. Come on. Oh my goodness. We're off to a great start. Grease fitting come out of the fitting. Look at that, see it? Lovely. All right, we'll get that fixed and we're gonna get on with it. All right, I'm back. Look at that, brand new lock and loop. We are in business. <laughs> Isn't this how greasing something usually goes? Three fittings down. Yeah, somebody left the grease gun out of grease. Ah. All right, back underneath and back in business. I'm uh, extremely impressed. This truck here actually has greasable spring pan bushings and uh, they actually take grease and somebody has greased them in the past, which is Almost unheard of. Usually these spring pin bushings. Look at that. That is good news. Usually the spring pin bushings, and then right here, move this light over here, there's a grease fitting the clutch. It's actually been greased too. I can't hardly believe it. Usually these are the ones that always are forgotten. So on that side. And then there's one on this side. It's been greased too, so. Look at that. The pin that goes through right here is what they call the king pin. That's where the front wheel pivots and turns. And they are a real pain in the butt to uh, change when they start to get loose. This truck here, they seem to be uh, extremely tight, which is because somebody's probably greased them over time. But the proper way to do it is take the weight off the truck. I don't always do that, but I try to do it at least every other oil change. So we got the weight off. A few shots of grease. See it coming out up there? That's good. It's the top to the bottom. The pin actually stays tight in the top and bottom and rotates in the axle and there's actual a bearing. I guess the bearing's up here. It's called a thrust bearing, uh, which is, no, bearing's down here, which is where all the weight is transferred to the, uh, to the wheel. I can't hardly believe it. Got the whole front end of the truck greased. Everything took grease. Nothing uh, looked loose or out of place. Pretty doggone happy with this thing so far from what I see. See, we got the uh, plug still on the end of the drive shaft here, which is good. All right, everything greased front and back. I can't believe it. everything took grease and looks like it had been greased previously, sometime rather recent, so that's definitely good. Next thing on the list, I wanna check oil in these hubs. This is actually supposed to be a sight glass, but somebody got a little carried away with the black spray paint and uh, covered it up. So this has got some gear oil in it, which you guys can see is full, at least this one is, which is good. And that keeps that bearing in that hub lubricated. These don't have it because they use the oil from the rear end, but the uh, steer axle up here also has the same thing. That one I can see, it's right there, which is actually a little bit over full, but we're gonna call that good. 
See if we can see the one on this side here. Eh, maybe. Oh yeah, she's got oil in her. Definitely not want to be losing a wheel bearing. This one here's got a completely different style cap on it. It's got a drain plug in it, ain't that handy. Usually these things end up getting busted off and you never see them again. Come out of there. Whoa, holy cow. That is honestly better than being empty, but that's not good either. Somebody has filled that up through here instead of using the fill line which is right there so we'll let that one bleed out it don't need to be that full all right last thing i'm gonna do before we call this service completes put some trc diesel pep in it i don't know how long this truck's been sitting or uh when the last time it's had anything ran through it so we're gonna put a splash there in the tank and give the old injectors and injection pump and the whole fuel system just a little bit of Instead of TRC, we're gonna give it a little bit of TLC. How's that? I guess what I meant to say is the TRC is gonna give the fuel system some TLC. How's that sound? So I think I got it straight that time. All right, guys, that's gonna be a wrap on that one. That is pretty much a full inspection of the uh, auction buy truck. Honestly, I think we only found one, um, one thing that was a little bit of a surprise. That's that busted cross member on that lift axle. And uh, if that's the only major issue that arises that wasn't uh, already on the radar, we're going to be in pretty good shape on this one. We're going to definitely be in pretty good shape. I'm uh, pretty pleased with the truck so far. Like I said, it drove up here great. Engine seems to run good. No major leaks. Nothing else is busted up. All the running gear in it seems to be in really good shape. So we won't know for sure until we get her on the road and uh, get some miles on her. Make sure everything's gonna work, but I think we got a pretty good fighting chance. I have called, <clears throat> excuse me, I've called the Mac dealer. Uh, I got a handful of parts coming. I got some hood guides coming. Uh, I got a few knickknack things missing in the cab on order. I got a new bushing for the um, gear shifter coming. Uh, a couple other oddball things that were missing a window over here. I don't know if I mentioned that previously. I think I did, but I'm not for sure. Uh, I got this new window coming. It is non-existent so i don't know eight ten things on the list just a few things i want to get fixed if you don't fix them now <laughs> they'll probably never get fixed i also ordered a kit to put uh, trailer brakes on this thing as we eventually got to get this thing set up to pull uh, plan b so i got uh, a kit on order that has basically got the dash valve the tractor protection valve and a lot of the different fittings and things we're gonna need to make this uh, into, I guess right now considered a truck into a tractor. So uh, I don't have to get a pin hitch on the back, but that is all gonna be in another video. Hopefully a little man, uh, man behind the scenes will be back. We'll get all that stuff welded up, get the hitch on it, get the rest of it plumbed up, get the knickknack things fixed. And uh, we'll be off the races hauling gravel, dirt or whatever we decide we're gonna haul. And hopefully, eventually, We'll get Lieutenant Bay in the shop and we'll get that truck done too. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give a big old thumbs up. We'll make sure you don't miss out on what's coming up next. If you haven't already, I'd consider subscribing. I hope we can catch you guys on the next one. Later.